with Hugo templating, you can control how your page is rendered. You can use variables, loop over arrays, check conditions, and run functions. Think of it as a simple programming language to help build the pages on your site. Those curly braces in your layout, that's Hugo templating. What's front matter? Front matter is a snippet of metadata at the top of content files. Some of the metadata will be specifically for Hugo. For example, setting a layout or indicating that the current page is a draft. Other forms of metadata will be specific to your site. For example, indicating which type of hero to use on the page or a list of your five favorite foods. Front meta comes in the form of a YAML snippet at the top of content files. And we've seen this in both the index and about pages. It may not seem like much, but we can reference the front meta using Hugo templating. So what is Hugo templating? Hugo uses Go templating as its templating language for layouts. It's easy once you get your head around it. As with many things in Hugo, sometimes it's easy to show rather than tell. So I can just write normal HTML in my layouts. And when I want to process something with Hugo, I can use these two curly braces and it'll execute whatever codes inside there. So here I'm outputting hello. So when this renders, it will just say hello rather than all the curly braces and double quotes. We can reference variables from front meta in a layout. For example, here we're outputting the title uh, from these two pages in a layout. Uh, and we do that with dot params dot variable name, in this case, title. We might want to set a variable globally, and we can do that in our config.toml file. So here it's already set a title as part of the scaffolding. And if I wanted to access that title, I can use dot site dot title. This one's coming from the front matter of the page. This one's coming from the configuration in config.toml. We can have conditions. Here we're checking if a title is set in params. If it is, we'll output the params title. Otherwise, we'll output the site title. We can set variables with the dollar sign. So here we're setting gazelle as our favorite food and then outputting it. We can iterate over arrays. Here we're initializing an array of best friends. And then we're using range to iterate over best friends. And range sets the context of each iteration to dot. So outputting dot in the first iteration will output Pumba, then Timon, etc. We can iterate over nested keys. So here's an example content file that has some somewhat complex front matter. We're setting a title and then an appearance. Appearance has eyes, snoot, whiskers, and limbs. And then limbs is an array. And each item in the array has claws, side, and position. And then we can output that structure in our layout. And to make that easier, we can use with. So here we're calling with, with, params.appearance. And what that does is it sets the context of this variable here to a dot. If we didn't have width and we wanted to output eyes, we would have to go dot params dot appearance dot eyes. With width, we can just go dot eyes. It, it has the added benefit as well, where if this variable doesn't exist, it will just skip over this entire block. Uh, so you won't reference variables that don't exist. So here we're outputting eyes, snoot, whiskers, and then we have another width for the limbs where we're iterating over the range of limbs and outputting their position, side, and claws. These are the foundations of templating. You'll be using all these concepts throughout your Hugo journey. And you can browse through the Hugo templating documentation to get an idea of what else you can do. If you like to keep your HTML output tidy, you can also add a dash to these tags. And what that does is in the output, it will remove all of this white space. If you don't have it and you look at the HTML source code, there'll just be an empty line here in the rendered output. If you do use this dash, then it will remove this white space and it will render like that. So 
no difference to the actual output of the website, but it keeps your source code a little bit tidier. Let's put our new Hugo templating knowledge into action by adding a footer to the website that includes your name and current year. On top of that, we'll add an optional front matter field you can use to hide the footer on a particular page. Let's start with an easy one, your name. Add it as a key to config.toml. Because this is something just for the site rather than a special Hugo term, we put it under a params object. So here we'll add params and then add on that. Now we'll create the partial. So we'll add footer.html to partials. And I'll paste in some content. So here we're checking if params hide footer. So this is the front matter field hide footer. If that exists. If it does, we're going to output no footer here. If it doesn't exist, we'll output a footer. Website made by site.params.name. That's what we just added to the config.toml. And then we're outputting a date, now.year. The final step is to add this to our base of. So we'll add it just before the end body tag. Call partial footer.html. And it needs the current page's context for this params hide footer. So we'll pass up the dot. Now to check that the front matter hide footer field is working, we'll go to our about page and add hide footer true. So home page will have the footer, about page won't have it. Let's see if that worked. So here we are on the home page and we have this footer. And the about page, we don't. So that worked. Next, we'll explore creating a blog in Hugo and put our new Hugo templating knowledge to the test.